Hey, I want us to take a look at some really exotic equations and see how we can actually go about solving them. Now, what's going to be so exotic about these equations? The exotic feature of these equations is that they'll be equations where things will be raised to rational exponents. We'll have rational powers. That means like little fractions up there. And whenever you have rational exponents, really bizarre things could happen. And so here is the life lesson with respect to equations having rational exponents. The life lesson is you always have to ching check. You always have to ching check. You always have to ching check. If you remember these three rules, you will never, ever, ever get bogged down with equations with rational exponents. Let's take a look at a, at a few examples together, and let me illustrate uh, exactly how this would go. Here's the first one I want us to think about. The quantity 5x minus 2, all raised to the 1 half power, is equal to the quantity 3x plus 6 raised to the 1 half power. Now, of course, first of all, what does this mean? Before I even try solving things, we have to think about what these things mean. Well, what, of course, this means is uh, a 1 half in the exponent is the same thing as taking the square root. So one way to think about this is the square root of 5x minus 2 equals the square root of 3x plus 6. OK, so that's what it means, and now I want to find solutions. So how do I go about this? Well, I, I don't like those rational exponents. No one likes rational exponents, even including me. So what do I want to do? I want to get rid of them legally. So how do I get rid of something like that legally? Well, if I have something raised to the 1 half power, which means square root, I can undo the square root by squaring. But if I square one side, I'm forced to square the other side to keep that equation fair and balanced. So if we look back at this, what I see here is I'm going to square both sides. Now, when I square the left-hand side, it's going to lift that radical. Or imagine it, just thinking about it, if I take something to the 1 half power and I square it, the 2 and the 1 half, I multiply exponents, and I see a power of 1. So what I'd see here when I square both sides is 5x minus 2 is equal to 3x plus 6. Now, that's a very happy equation, which I can now solve. If I subtract 3x from both sides, I see 2x minus 2 is equal to 6. If I add 2 to both sides, I see 2x equals 8, and therefore x has to equal 4. Now, it may seem that I'm done, but I'm not, because I always have to, always, always have to check my answer. Because when I have these crazy rational exponents, weird things can happen. So let's take a moment to check. So let's plug into the original thing, not to this one, but to the original one, make sure this is good. If I plug in a 4 into this, I see 5 times 4, that's going to be 20. And 20 minus 2 is going to be 18. So I see 18 raised to the 1 half power, which is the square root of 18. And I want to know if that equals this side. So if I take 4 and plug it in here, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. And I'm raising that to the 1 half power, which is square root. And you'll notice that square root of 18 equals square root of 18. Cha-ching! It checks. So in fact, this is the answer. And we have a solution. There's one solution in this case, x equals 4. All right, so now that you're kind of warmed up to this, I want to try another question, which uh, also has rational exponents. In fact, this one just has 1. It's the quantity 11 minus x to the 1 half power equals x plus 1. Use the exact same method. I don't like the, the square root. I don't like that 1 half exponent. So I'm going to square that. But I have to square both sides. Otherwise, I will no longer have any quality. So if I square both sides, on the left-hand side, it's going to lift that radical or lift that 1 half. Think about it this way. This thing to the 1 half power all squared, the 1 half times 2 gives me just a power of 1. And so what I see here now is uh, 11 minus x. So that's the good news, lichen. The bad news is there's a little price to pay because I have to square this side too. Great mistake would be to write this and call it a day. But that's not actually correct. I have to actually square. All right, so now this is not going to be just a linear equation. It's going to be some kind of quadratic equation. How do we go about solving that? I want to get everything undone, so I'm going to kind of foil things out and then see if I can factor. So uh, 11 minus x, and I have to square this out. A great guess is x squared plus 1 squared, but don't forget about those inner terms. So we have x times x, which is x squared. The inside term is an x. The outside term is an x. That's a 2x total, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So when we expand, we get this. And now what do I want to do? I want to bring everything over, let's say, to the right-hand side, the big party. It's a quadratic. Come to my house, and we'll have a big old 
shindig. So let's um, add x to both sides. When I add x to both sides, I see the x squared, and then I have 2x here, and I add the extra x, I have 3x. If I now also subtract 11 from both sides, then I see a minus 10, because I have minus 11 plus 1, and that equals 0. And the question is, can this be factored? It's a quadratic. Can we factor it? Let's try it right now live. Hope for the best. I see a negative sign here, which means these will have opposite signs here, hopefully. And what uh, multiplies to give 10, but then subtracts to give 3, it sounds like it's going to be a 5 placed here and a 2 placed here. 5x minus 2x is 3x, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. I'm looking good. Looking good. So either this equals 0 or this equals 0. If this equals 0, I see x equals negative 5. If this equals 0, I see x equals 2. So let's try the 2 solution first, since that's the smaller one. Because remember, you always have to cha -ching check. So if we plug in 2, not to here, but way back to here, let's see what happens. 11 minus 2, that is 9. So I see 9 to the 1 half power on this side. Now, the 1 half power means square root. So the square root of 9 works out to be 3. So this is the number 3. And the question is, does it equal this side? When I put a 2 in here for x, 2 plus 1 equals 3. Notice that 9 to the 1 half does equal 3. This checks. And so in fact, we have a solution right here of x equals 2. Great. So let's now check this solution. So if we check this solution, I'm going to plug in x equals negative 5 way back into here. So I have 11 minus negative 5. So 11 minus negative 5 is the same thing as 11 plus 5, which is 16. And 16 to the 1 half power is what I have on that side. And on this side, what do I have? When I put in a negative 5 into here, I have a negative 5 plus 1 is actually negative 4. And so the question is, is the square root of 16 equal to negative 4? And the answer is no. The square root of 16 equals just 4. And this is the kind of problem we introduce potentially when we have these rational exponents. We could introduce the solution that almost looks perfect, but they might be off by like a negative sign, as in this example. This is 4. It doesn't equal negative 4. This is an example of what's called an extraneous root, an extraneous root. And so it's not a solution to the original question. It's a solution to the question that we made up. We made this question up. But in fact, it's not a solution to the original question. So by checking, we see that this is not a solution. No good. Should we try one more together? I think it's kind of good to try one more, because these do require a little something special. So check this one out. This is really strange. 2x minus 1 all raised to the 2 thirds power. And that's supposed to equal x to the 1 third power. Now what do those thirds mean? Well, those thirds, of course, represent uh, taking a cube root. So this says 2x minus 1, take the cube root, then square it. And that's supposed to equal the cube root of x. How in the world would we resolve this? Well, here notice that the exponents aren't the same. And the thing I don't like, of course, are these denominators. I don't like the, the fractional part of the exponents. So I want to get rid of those threes. And the way that I will do that is I'll cube both sides, because the way to undo a cube root is to cube. Or think about it this way. If I take this object here and I cube it, then I raise it to the third power. And so 1 third and then the 3, I multiply and I get a power of 1. And that's exactly what I want. I want to have nice uh, whole number exponents. So when I take my green pen, and I cube both sides. On this side, a great mistake would be to write this, because I got rid of everything. But I didn't get rid of everything. If I'm just cubing, then I get rid of that denominator of 3, but I still have that 2. So that's the correct answer when I cube. And when I cube this, I just get x. So that's now the simplified version that I want to look at of this equation. And so I have to, of course, I expand this out. And this is going to be uh, 4 x squared when I square this. Then my inside term is going to be a negative 2x. My outside term is going to be a negative 2x. When I combine them, I see negative 4x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. And that all equals still x. It's a quadratic, big party coming all over to my house. Come on to my house. And then if I subtract x from both sides, instead of negative 4, I now have negative 5x plus 1 now equals 0. And let's hope, let's hope, 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 hope as in Bob, that this can be factored. 
So how would I try this? I'll try 2x and 2x. They'll be the same sign, and they'll both be negative. And I have to produce something that's going to give me a 1. Uh, so I don't see that happening here. So maybe the 2x and the 2x wasn't a good idea. That's fine. You try, you live, you learn. So let's see, maybe it's got to be a 4x and an x. So let's try it that way. By the way, do you see that that's totally OK? You try a factorization, they don't always work. It's OK. Let's try that. Again, they have to be the same sign. They both have to be negative. Let's just try 1 and 1. Ah, that works a lot better. Do you see why? Because this gives me a negative x. This gives me a negative 4x. They combine to give me negative 5x. I tried this way. Didn't work. Do I panic? No, I just try another way. So there are two solutions. Either this equals 0 or this equals 0. If this equals 0, that means x has to equal a quarter. Or the other possibility is that this equals 0, which x equals 1. So let's see what happens if I plug in um, a quarter. If I plug in a quarter into the original thing, because we're checking now, you don't check with the one that you modify, your modified version. You have to check back to the original thing. Let's see what happens. So if I plug in a quarter into here, I see 2 times a quarter. 2 times a quarter is actually a half. So this is a half minus 1, which is negative 1. I'm sorry, a half minus 1 is negative a half. So I have negative a half raised to the 2 thirds power. Now, what does that mean? It means I take negative a half, square it, and then take the cube root. So it's the same thing as the cubed root of negative a half squared, which is positive a quarter. So that's what I get on this side. What do I get when I take a quarter and plug it into this side? Well, notice when I plug in a quarter, I see a quarter, or 1 fourth to the 1 third power, which, of course, is the cube root of a quarter. And I see that, in fact, they're equal. So this checks, and this is a valid solution. So that's awesome. Now, what about the x equals 1? Let's try that. So we try x equals 1. I plug in 1 into x here. I see 2 times 1, which is just 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have 1 to the 2 thirds power. But 1 to the 2 thirds power, that's 1 squared, which is 1. And then I take the cube root of 1, which is still 1. 1 is great. So 1's easy. And the question is, does that equal what I get when I plug in 1 here? Well, 1 to the 1 third power is, again, the cube root of 1, which we know is 1. 1 equals 1, because math is good. And so I see that, in fact, this is also a solution. So here's an example where we have two solutions, x equals 1, x equals a quarter. And we're sure they're solutions, because we checked them both. And so you can see that when you have rational exponents in an equation, a lot of strange things can happen. The most important thing to remember, always check your answer. And then when you're proceeding, you want to take the tricky equation, convert it into a slightly more friendly equation by raising both sides to an exponent that will clear the denominator in the exponent of your original equation. Have some fun thinking about it, and then going back to the original equation to check. Anything that works, you know it's good to go. Anyway, have fun thinking about equations with rational exponents. They seem exotic, and they are. They seem tricky, but they're not that tricky. I'll see you soon.